Yeah. Yeah. That's more like it. That's more like it. That's how you bounce back. That's how you bounce back from a blowout loss. Okay, so let's get to it. The Pistons bounce back tonight. They take care of business against the Brooklyn Nets on the road. 106 to 92. So let's get into it. So, so initial thoughts, right? First of all, I'm in a good mood right now. The Pistons just won. The Lions are up right now on the Packers 17 to 3. I'm feeling good right now. It feels good to be a Detroit sports fan at the moment. Um, but about this game, so let's get into some initial thoughts for this game, right? Tobias Harris, man. I got to shout him out. Tobias Harris played one of his better games of the season so far. The scoring was there for Tobias tonight, and the defense was also there tonight. He really was give, exerting a lot of effort defensively. Um, he didn't do anything too extraordinary, but he gave a solid scoring. He gave a solid defense. And he kept our guys locked in. There was a few periods in that in the game where the Pistons could have given this game away or they could have just packed it in and they didn't. So I want to give a shout out to Tobias, man, for keeping the guys in the game and for just doing his part tonight. He just he played his role. I think tonight he played the role that Pistons fans expected him to play when he came here. Right. Just giving a solid 18 to 20 points, you know, a few rebounds here and there and just solid defense. And of course, veteran leadership. And tonight he gave us that. So shout out to Tobias. The Pistons, as a whole, started this game slow again. That's kind of been a the theme here. These last few games, the Pistons are just coming out the gate very slow. They're coming out very sluggish. They're not coming in as if they're ready to attack. They're looking as if they're ready to respond instead of being the aggressor. And that happened again tonight. They came out the gate slow. They went down 4-10 to 10 early, quick timeout. And they came out after that, and, and they responded after that. But the Pistons, they have to get off to better starts, man. Nothing against the Brooklyn Nets, but you can't come out sluggish like this and expect to be able to just get back into these games against top tier opponents right the Pistons were able to tonight because they were the better team from top to bottom the Pistons are just better and so this was a game they were supposed to win and they won but they have to work on those slow starts man they can't expect to be able to just get back into the game like they did tonight when they come out as slow as they did because what's going to happen most nights when you're playing playoff teams is what happened the other night against the Knicks right they're not going to let you back into the game there's not going to be any uh, opportunity for a comeback you may be to play them even but by that point the game is already over because you gave it away in the first quarter so they got away with it tonight but going forward they have to continue to work on that just coming out stronger speaking of that sluggish start one of the beneficiaries of that for the Brooklyn Nets was Cam Johnson man the Pistons just allowed him to come out and be comfortable and get open shots you know they weren't rotating properly in the first half um, they were letting guys just go right by them just too much help defense was needed because the individual defense was not there in the first half. And that led to open shots. You know, the ball always moves faster than the players when you're rotating. And that's what happened in that first half. So, so once again, you know, you can't let guys like Cam Johnson get 20 points in the first half. You know, he, he, if, he, if he gets 20 points in the game, that's still what you want to cap him at, right? They did, they did slow him down in the second half. He only has six second half points, right? So they did take care of business individually, defensively in the second half. They turned it up. Watching him get up in that first half, though, I just kept thinking to myself, man, where is Asar Thompson? Like, we have not heard anything from him. And I'm starting to get a little concerned um, about his status basketball-wise and, and outside of basketball, just for his own sake. I'm really starting to wonder and get a little bit concerned about that blood clot. That's nothing to play with. And we really could have used him tonight. You know, if he's playing in this game, Cam Johnson doesn't have 21st half points. It just doesn't happen. So, hoping we can get him back soon. But in the meantime, between time, we still need to strap up defensively and make sure that we're taking care of business in the first half. So to the second half, right? The second half defense was much improved. You saw guys just playing harder defensively. The Pistons outscored the Nets 31 to 20 in that third quarter. So they got their offense rolling, but a lot of it came off their defense. And that's really what allowed them to hold them to 20 points in that third quarter. Let's talk about something for a second. Um, I know that JB Bickerstaff is allowing the bigs, if they grab the rebound, to push the ball up the floor. But the more and more I see it, the more and more I don't like it at least right not right now because there's just too many careless turnovers whether it's jd whether it's fontecchio it's just it's just too many turnovers where they're trying to bring the ball up court and the pass isn't there and they're trying to force it when they should have passed the ball as soon as they got the rebound and i understand you know pacing and trying to pick up the pace but get the ball to your guard man let them push it you know that's that's what they're there for and what that allows you to do is set up in the paint especially if you're a big guy like Jalen Dern. So I don't want to see too much more of that, to be honest, right now. Just put the ball in Cade's hands or put the ball in Jaden's hands and let them do what they do and let them set the offense up. Speaking of Jalen Dern, though, he played his best game of the season, right? Um, Jalen Dern just looked like he was focused on the defensive end tonight. For the first time all season, it looked like he was solely focused on defense. And even though we know that he's an offensively talented player, I think that's where his focus needs to be for right now. Every Detroit Pistons team that's been successful has had a, has had great defensive paint play, great defensive and rim protection, 
And that's what he provided tonight. He played much, much better on the defensive end. He had a, he had a few blocks. He had a few steals. He was diving on the floor for loose balls, right? He was getting those 50-50 balls. One thing I would say is that the goal should be to get 75% of the 50-50 balls, right? You're not going to get every single one. You're not going to get every single loose ball. But if you can get 75% of those, of those 50-50 balls, you're going to put yourself in good position because you're not allowing the other team to get extra possessions. And on the flip side, you're creating extra possessions for yourself. So JD was really locked in tonight defensively, man. I was happy to see him kind of bounce back. He did have an advantage. Whenever he was on the court, he was always the biggest player on the court. Um, and that's because the Nets started Dorian Finney-Smith, who's about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, at center. And I actually tweeted at the beginning of the game that this should be a bounce back game for JD because he should be able to dominate in that paint on both ends of the court. And he did tonight. I was happy to see this too. I was happy to see that our guards were looking for him. Our guards were looking for him on the offensive end. They were looking to reward him for his defense on the offensive end. There were two back-to-back -back plays where Jalen Duren was able to get an easy alley-oop dunk. One from Cade and then one from J.I., right? And I believe both of those came off with a pick-and-roll offense. And that's important too because we talk about the pick and roll offense with Jalen Duran pretty consistently, right? The last few games, he's been getting whistled for offensive fouls because he hasn't been setting up properly. The timing between he and Cade and he and Jaden Ivey have just been off. And that's put him in position to get offensive fouls because he's setting up too late off of the screen. So that's been happening either that or he's just been afraid to set screens because he hasn't figured out that timing as far as when to set. But tonight, he looked a lot better. He only had one offensive foul right out of the pick and roll everything else was a hard screen and he was set in position so it looks like they may be figuring that timing out and that's going to be very important for Jalen Duran because most of his offense is going to come off of that right it's going to come off of that pick and roll offense and tonight guys found him you know they they were looking for him tonight and we all know once you get it going offensively it's going to make you want to strap up even more so on the defensive end of the floor it just happens that's just how it goes so JD was great tonight he was five for five from the field he had 13 points 17 rebounds man that's what I'm talking about that's a grown man game right? Four assists, one steal, three blocks. He did have four turnovers, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. Like, this was by far JD's best game of the season. And this is the Jalen Duren that we need all season long, right? We need him to protect the paint. As much as we love Isaiah Stewart and as hard as he plays and as physical as he plays, he's still only 6'8", 6'9". And he's not a crazy leaper. He's not a crazy athlete. He's a good, he's a good athlete. He's a strong athlete, but he's not a, he's not a leaper. He's not able to defend the rim the way Jalen Duran naturally is because of his natural gifts physically. So I'm really, really proud of JD. And I want to say this too. This just goes to show why patience is important with your young players. There were fans this offseason, and you know who you are, who wanted the Pistons to go and sign Nick Claxton this offseason for $20 million a year when we had Jalen Duran on the roster. Now, I'm not saying Jalen Duran is much better than Nick Claxton is right now, but I do think he's better. And I would much rather have Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart than Jalen Duran and Nick Claxton minus $20 million, right? It just doesn't make sense. So I think Jalen Duran is just fine with where he is. He just needs to continue to build on this performance and continue to grow, and he'll be just fine. But great game all around for Jalen Duran tonight. Happy to see it. Very balanced scoring attack tonight. It was a very defensive game for the most part. The Pistons, especially in that second half, did play good defense. And I got to give the, the Nets credit too. They, they're not the most talented team, but they play hard, right? They play feisty, and I think they understand they have to play that way because they don't have the most talented team. And that's how they're going to get most of their wins this season, just from trying to outplay teams and outwill teams. That's going to be how they get their wins. But it didn't happen tonight because the Pistons stepped up to the challenge, and they matched their energy, especially in that second half. And in the second half, once they matched their energy, the talent just kind of took over. Let's talk about Fontecchio for a second, right? So I do like Simone Fontecchio on this team. I think he's a solid bench player for this team. He's solid, right? But... I think offensively, I don't want him taking any shots if he has to put the ball on the floor. Even if it's a pump fake dribble sidestep. Don't want to see it, right? He needs to only be taking shots when he catches the ball in the pocket and goes straight up. Other than that, I don't want to see him shooting the basketball. If you got a dribble, move it and wait for it to come back to you. So many times he takes shots off the dribble and they just don't look in the rhythm. He's a very mechanical shooter, right? He's a very mechanical shooter. So that extra pump fake dribble may throw him off. That's not his game. He needs to be right in rhythm, right in the pocket, straight up. If it's not there, move the ball. I like something similar to Klay Thompson, right? He's not Klay Thompson by any means. I'm not saying that, but and Klay Thompson has more handle. But I'm just saying Klay Thompson is best suited when he can just catch it and go straight up. If you don't have it, just move it. It'll come back to you if it's supposed to. So let's get to the box and take a look at some individual performances tonight, right? Let's start with Kate. K finished with 19 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. He has 7 turnovers, which is a lot. Again, got to watch that, K. Um, in 35 minutes on 8 for 13 shooting, right? 1 for 4 from 3. 
two for three from the free throw line. So he had an overall solid game. This wasn't his best game. Um, the turnovers are still high. Still got to work on getting those down. I feel like he's still trying to do too much when they crowd him. Right? He talked about the last game, playing in the crowd. It's something he has to work on. You know, he's got to move that ball if it's not there. He has to rely and trust in the shooters that he's winning all this time. Right? He's got them now. He's got, he's got weapons on the floor. So I think he just has to trust them a little bit more. In the second half, he started to do that. You saw he was just really just evaluating and surveying the defense and just taking what was there. And he was trusting his guys, and they were not going to down tonight, especially in that second half. So overall, good game from Kate. He shot better than 50% from the field. Uh, but he's got to get those turnovers down, right? But I think I think over time, as these guys continue to gel and play together, those will go down. Tobias Harris, man, we talked about him already, but he played a really good game. He had 18 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds on 8 for 13 shooting as well. So he shot well from the field as well. 1 for 4 from 3, 1 for 1 from the free throw line. And once again, I mentioned he was just picking the spots, right? He was just, he's giving, he's giving us what we thought we would get from him, right? Just solid, consistent, steady, play on both ends of the court. We don't need him to be a leading scorer or anything like that. And maybe even a second option, right? Just play your role and play it well. And tonight he did that. Let's get to Jaden. Jaden had 15 points, five rebounds, five assists, one steal, a block, four turnovers. In 35 minutes, he didn't shoot well. Four for 15, one for seven from three, and six from seven from the free throw line. So Jaden didn't have a great game on paper. He was a little bit out of control sometimes, especially early, just trying to force things a little bit too much, right? But once again, like everybody else, in the second half, when the game slowed down, he really began to make smart plays with the basketball. He began surveying better. He began making the right play much better in the second half. And one thing about Jaden that I really, really love is just his effort plays. Just the effort plays. Just the little things. He was diving on the floor. He was rotating well. There was one play where the Nets turned us over, and he turned them over right back and got us a bucket. So he didn't play a great game, but his compete level is very high right now. He's competing every single game he's not one of the guys you, you look at when you say the Pistons came out sluggish right he's usually one of the guys that's bringing the effort every single night and he did tonight and I noticed too at the end of the game when Kate and Jaden were in the game they were going to Jaden a lot more they're trusting him a, a lot more in the half court offense with the ball and he was making the right play more times than not so we're seeing Jaden continue to grow right he's getting better with his pacing he's not going full tilt all the time he's picking the spots much better Right, he still has to work on it, but he's getting much better. And we also see his decision making, man. His decision making, he's finding the right guy. And it's easy for him to find the right guy most times because he has the speed to get by his guy, right? So the defense is going to break down. They're not just going to give him a, a dunk at the rim. So he's reading and reacting, and he's making the right plays more times than not. So good game tonight from J.I. Um, he didn't play great, but he played good enough for the Pistons to win for sure. Tim Hardaway also played well tonight, man. 14 points and two assists. Right, he gave us timely buckets when we needed them. And he played, once again, he continues to play tough defense. I, like all of you guys, cannot wait for Asar Thompson to get back, right? But he's not here right now. So we have to go with what we have. And right now we have Tim Hardaway at the three, and he is battling. The same thing I said about Jaden Ivey, I can say about Tim Hardaway. The effort is not lacking. It's just that he's 6'5". And being 6'5", and playing the small forward spot in today's NBA, is tough. It's tough, but once again, he battled tonight. He didn't play a ton of minutes. He played 23 minutes, but he shot five from nine from the field and three for six from three, one from one from the line. So that's what you want from Tim Hardaway, man. You know, he didn't he didn't shoot us out of a game. He didn't take ill advised shots tonight. He was efficient, only nine shots, and he made five, and he shot 50% from three. Not much to say about Tim Hardaway negatively, man. He played a pretty good game overall, he, and he gave us a scoring when we needed it. Malik Beasley hit some timely buckets tonight, man. He had 18 points, one rebound, one assist and two steals in 29 minutes. He shot six for 15 from the field, which isn't great. Four 11 from three, which is okay. Two for three from the line, but he hit some timely shots in that second half, man. There was a point in the second half where the Pistons were up 10 and the Nets were trying to make a, a final push to get back into this game. And every time he would just hit a big, a big dagger three and it would just demoralize the Nets and just kill the momentum. So he didn't shoot great tonight, but he made very timely plays in crucial moments when the Pistons needed him. So shout out to him. He's a shooter. He's going to keep shooting and I have confidence in him late in games. If he's going to take those shots, I have confidence he's going to knock those down, especially if he's wide open like he was tonight. The last guy I want to get to is Isaiah Stewart, right? He had two points, five rebounds, two blocks. He did foul out early in this game, right? He only played 14 minutes, but I just love what I continue to see from him, man. I just love what I continue to see as far as his effort, as far as setting the tone. And this is so cliche, but he does do so many things that don't show up on the stat sheet, right? One of those things is just providing extra possessions for the Pistons, right? I don't mean just offensive rebounds either. I'm talking about extra possessions on the offensive end. There's so many times with Isaiah Stewart, when you see the Pistons go for a shot and it misses, 
and he goes up for the rebound and the ref goes like this right because that means hey he was in position before you were and because of that since you guys both go up for the rebound when there's contact he's going to be the one that benefits from that right so he's giving the pistons extra possessions it's equivalent to offensive rebound right so just those little things that isaiah stewart does just giving the pistons extra possessions just doing the little things is what he's going to continue to do for us all season and it's not always going to show up in the stat sheet right but it may be the difference in wins and losses over the course of a game and over the course of a season so shout out to Stu, man for setting that tone and continuing to be with the pistons need off the bench and that's wrap for this game man but what did you guys see that i missed let me know down below and let's talk about it next up for the pistons are the los angeles lakers tomorrow night at home and I'll be right back here post game to break it all down. I do believe the Pistons can win this game tomorrow against the Lakers, but they got to bring the same defensive effort and intensity that they had in tonight's game for the entire game. If they don't, it could get ugly because JJ Redick has the Lakers playing much better basketball this season. So we'll see what happens. Be sure to like the video and thank you to everybody who supports my channel. The more you support, the more content I can bring you. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it It's for my city, and the team coming with me Headed for the championship, even if the road is long Legends pave the way for us Legends see nothing in this world can take it from us Don't underestimate our generation When you see us coming for you